Hello everyone and welcome to Cinematic Excrements. We've finally gotten to the point in my worst picture project where I've encountered a movie that I already reviewed years ago. But that doesn't mean we can't waste time by giving it a second look. So let's briefly revisit Battlefield Earth. If you haven't seen my original review or are otherwise unfamiliar with Battlefield Earth, the movie is based on a book of the same name by science fiction author and controversial religious leader L. Ron Hubbard. The story takes place in the year 3000, a millennium after the alien race known as the Cyclos invaded Earth to raid the planet of its gold supply. They conquered Earth in a mere nine minutes, and what's left of humanity exists as either slave labor for the Cyclos or nomadic tribes, extremely primitive compared to what they were a thousand years ago. Man is an endangered species. A clever tagline for a not-so-clever story. Ultimately, a man named Johnny Goodboy Tyler, yes really, leads a revolt that takes back the planet and nearly exterminates the entire Cyclo race. I recently sat down and watched this movie for the first time in a good long while. And guess what? It still sucks. It's one of those rare movies where pretty much everything went wrong. The director, Roger Christian, clearly had no idea what he was doing, overusing the Dutch angle to the point of ridiculousness. And he did likewise with the barn door wipes. I counted at least 20 of these damn things in the movie. Roger, there are other ways to transition between scenes, you know. For example, you could use a horizontal wipe, a box wipe, a herbal wipe. A star wipe. I mean, the star wipe is kind of silly, but no more so than anything else in the movie. And is there anything wrong with a good old-fashioned crossfade? The color grading is terrible. Everything is tinted either brown or purple. It's like The Matrix, except shit. Like, it literally looks like the film stock was dragged through shit. The special effects are sadly about what you would expect from a movie with about a third the budget of a Star War. Likewise for the costumes. Not only are they weirdly inconsistent with John Travolta, Forrest Whitaker, and Kelly Preston's faces largely untouched while their fellow aliens are in heavy facial prosthetics, but since the Cyclos are supposed to be much taller than humans, all of them are walking on stilts. And boy howdy does it look silly. The amazing thing is, Peter Jackson's The Fellowship of the Ring came out the exact same year, and they managed to make the hobbits and dwarves look much smaller than the humans and elves using body doubles, forced perspective, and the occasional green screen shot. Battlefield Earth's solution? Put everybody on stilts. It's hilarious watching all of these aliens slowly lumbering around like they have a 20-pound weight strapped to each leg. A drunken elephant would move with more urgency. The story is about as dumb as the costumes. There are so many things in this movie that make no sense at all, like the fact that the Cyclo's breath gas, as they call it, explodes when it comes into contact with radiation. This is ultimately their undoing, but how did they manage to survive so long without ever coming in contact? with anything radioactive. That's impossible. And there are little things like this scene where Johnny cuts off a lock of his hair and gives it to this guy. Why does he do that? I don't know. And the movie's certainly not gonna tell you. Maybe it would make more sense if I had read the book, but I'm not gonna do that because it's a thousand pages long. You think I got enough time to waste reading a thousand pages of mediocre sci-fi? In this economy? And the other thing that really blew my mind is the fact that the Cyclos are completely stupid. These aliens don't have half a brain to share between them and continue to make the most idiotic mistakes time and time again. Like John Travolta's Turl handing a gun to Johnny who just shot a Cyclo dead because he didn't believe the humans were actually capable of using guns, allowing Johnny to shoot another Cyclo dead. I don't know if it's really fair to say the Cyclos were wiped out by the humans. Really, they were wiped out by their own stupidity and arrogance. And way back when I originally reviewed this movie, I thought the very idea that an alien race so incredibly stupid could take over an entire planet was absolutely preposterous. These people didn't seem capable of taking over a lemonade stand. But you know... It is remarkable just how much the events of the last four years have changed the way I look at such things. Clearly, incompetence is not a barrier to power. Sometimes it appears to be a prerequisite. And I am reminded of a lesson I learned way back in the days of my youth from a very wise man. Never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. 
and I had forgotten the comical lengths this movie went to avoid an R rating. A good chunk of the violence happens off screen, and what we do see has almost no blood, and sometimes no reactions, even when limbs are getting blown off. And the worst word any of them ever say is crap. And they use the word crap so much I would have sworn Strong Bad wrote the screenplay. What kind of crap lousy game are you playing? And I don't know why they were so tame. PG-13 allows you to say pretty much anything except the F-bomb, and even then you're allowed to say it once. So why would they only say crap? What crap should I know? And of course, there's the acting, which is, well, you know. While you were still learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxies. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Hilarious, but bad. And I don't understand how it's as bad as it is considering there are talented people in this movie. I've seen Barry Pepper, who plays Johnny, in other movies and I know he can act. Forrest Whitaker, who plays Turtle's sidekick Kerr, has an Oscar to his name. Travolta has a couple of nominations. How did he go from Pulp Fiction to this? But you know, the more I think about it, the more I realize Travolta's performance is pretty much the only one that fits the movie. Everything about Battlefield Earth is ridiculous, and yet most of the cast is playing it straight. Travolta, whether intentionally or not, is hamming it up to 11. If the rest of the cast had followed his example, it might have worked. And I stand by what I said in my original review. I had a lot of fun watching the banter between Travolta and Whitaker. I would probably watch a buddy cop movie with those two. Turl and Kerr, Psycho Detectives. That would be awesome, and you ain't gonna convince me otherwise. So yeah, the movie sucks, and it won seven Razzies out of eight nominations. But were they all deserved? Well, let's go down the list. Worst screenplay? Yes. Worst director? God, yes. Worst actor for Travolta? Sure. Worst screen couple for Travolta and anyone sharing the screen with him? Seems pointless, but okay. Worst supporting actress for the late Kelly Preston? Okay, stop right there. At this point, you're just giving out awards to bad movies for the sake of it. Preston was in one scene, she had about five lines, and she was fine. Her Worst Supporting Actress award is a damn joke. Moving on, Barry Pepper won Worst Supporting Actor, and Forrest Whitaker was nominated for the same award. To be fair... Uh, to be fair... To be fair... Well, to be fair... These performances left something to be desired. Likewise for their fellow nominees, Stephen Baldwin, Keanu Reeves, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. However... There was another movie that came out in the year 2000 that somehow escaped the attention of the Golden Raspberry Foundation. A little movie called Dungeons and Dragons? <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons? Oh. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Hard as it may be to believe, this movie was not nominated for a single Razzie. How is that even possible, especially in the acting categories? As bad as Battlefield Earth's acting was, I would have to say Dungeons & Dragons was worse overall. You had Jeremy Irons overacting, Thora Birch underacting, Bruce Payne constipacting, and Marlon Wayans doing... whatever the hell this is. <laughs> and the Razzies couldn't find room to give any of them a nomination? How was that even possible? And finally, there's the award for Worst Picture. And here's where it gets tricky, as there were a lot of bad movies at the turn of the millennium. Battlefield Earth's fellow nominees included such gems as Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, which won Worst Remake or Sequel, and was one of my earliest reviews on this show. It was a crappy horror movie that had very little to do with the Blair Witch Project, and nothing to do with the Book of Shadows. There is no Book of Shadows anywhere in the movie. I have no idea where that title came from. Next was The Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas, another sequel that failed to live up to the original. And the original didn't exactly set the bar very high. None of the original cast returned, apart from a brief cameo from Rosie O'Donnell. The new cast consisted of people who were far too good for this, and Stephen Baldwin. The CGI was shockingly bad, even for the time, and they went to the trouble of adding the great gazoo to the movie, and then he didn't actually do anything. Take him out of the movie, nothing changes. I will say, it felt a lot like an episode of the cartoon. The problem is, an episode of the cartoon was 30 minutes, and the movie was three times that. Then there's Little Nicky. It's about 90 minutes of Adam Sandler talking funny. It's like any other movie that's 90 minutes of Adam Sandler talking funny. I don't know what else to say. 
And finally, there's the next best thing, which I freely admit I have not seen. It's not available for streaming anywhere, at least not in this country. It's not on VOD. I was not able to find it through <clears throat> alternate means, and I didn't feel like buying it. But it's in Madonna's filmography, so how good could it be? And there were other movies that somehow escaped the worst picture category that year. There was the inexplicably popular Big Mama's House, the inexplicably popular Mission Impossible 2, the not at all popular Ready to Rumble, and of course, Dungeons and Dragons. How? I, I cannot wrap my head around this. How did it not get nominated in a single category? I went back and checked and rechecked and re 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 rechecked at least 20 times because I was sure I must have missed something. But no, not one nomination from the Razzies. How did that happen? I refuse to believe the next best thing could possibly have been worse than this. The Stinkers gave it eight nominations, including Worst Picture. They knew what was up. How did the Razzies overlook this one? I just, I, I feel like I'm going insane. But in any case, the ultimate question is, did Battlefield Earth deserve to win Worst Picture? With the caveat that I have not seen the next best thing, yes. Yes, it did. I mean, how could it not? There were other bad movies in the year 2000, but Battlefield Earth isn't just a bad movie, it's THE bad movie. It's legendary for a reason. It's completely inept in every possible way. You couldn't try to make a movie this bad. And some people have tried. And the amazing thing is, they actually wanted to make a sequel. The movie only covers the first half of the book. When the planet Cyclo blows up, you'll note one ship teleports away just before it gets vaporized. These surviving Cyclos were presumably going to return to Earth for revenge in the next movie. They had plans. Oh lordy, they had plans. That's almost adorable. And if you haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend it. It is hilarious and a fascinating piece of cinema history. Rarely have I had so much fun wondering just what in the hell went wrong. And I don't expect I shall feel the same way next time when I journey into the world of one Tom Green. Help! Stupid humans. <laughs>